Hey, welcome to the Senvaru Task Plus tutorial. My name is Andori Stefan and today I'm going to show you how to create the iconic carpet pattern from Stanley Kubrick's movie The Shining in Adobe Illustrator. As with any new project, we're going to start by setting up a new document by heading over to File, New, or by using the Ctrl N keyboard shortcut, which will bring up the following window prompt. Here we'll want to make sure that the profile is set to Web, after which we can adjust the size of our artboard by setting its width to 602 pixels and its height to a slightly smaller 600 pixels. Once we've finished setting up our project file, we need to make sure that our shapes will snap to its underlying pixel grid by heading over to View and enabling the Snap to Pixel option. At this point, we can start working on the pattern's repeating segment by creating an 86 by 106 pixels rectangle, which we'll call using a bright orange and then center a line to the larger artboard. Zoom in on the shape that we've just created and then add a new anchor point to the center of its top and bottom edges using the Add Anchor Point tool. Select the newly created anchors using the Direct Selection tool and then adjust the shape by right clicking and then going to Transform, Move and entering minus 26 pixels into the vertical value field, leaving the horizontal one at 0 pixels. Give the resulting shape a top outline segment by using the Move tool to create a copy which will push to the top by a distance of 14 pixels and then adjust by cutting out the secondary copy from its surface using Pathfinder's minus run shape mode. Color the resulting shape using black and then add the bottom outline segment using a duplicate, making sure to select and group all three of them together afterwards using the Ctrl G keyboard shortcut. Create the main shape for the smaller detail using a 26 by 14 pixels rectangle, which we will color using a dark red, and then position at a distance of 50 pixels from the upper outline tip. Adjust the shape that we've just created by adding a new anchor point to the center of its top and bottom edges, which we'll then individually select and push to the outside by a distance of 8 pixels using the directional arrow keys. Give the resulting shape an outline by heading over to Object, Path, Offset Path, and then setting the offset value to 12 pixels, making sure to snap its anchors back into place by turning on the pixel preview mode, and then simply selecting and dragging them to the nearest grid line intersection. Change the outline's color to black, and then select and group the two shapes together using the Ctrl G keyboard shortcut. Add the side details using two copies of the one that we've just finished working on, which will center align to the other edges of the larger shape, positioning them at a distance of 28 pixels from its outline's bottom anchors. Create the vertical outline segments using three 12 by 62 pixels rectangles which will position so that they connect the side details with the top outline and the middle one with the bottom outline. Take your time and once you're done, select and group all of the shapes that we've created so far using the Ctrl G keyboard shortcut. At this point, we're pretty much done working on the repeating segment, which means that we can now mask it by creating an 86 by 160 pixels rectangle, which will center align to the underlying group and then with both of them selected, simply right click and hit my clipping mask. Once we've masked the shapes, we can align them to the artboard's left edge and then create 7 copies by simply dragging them to the right side by holding down the Alt and Shift keys and then using the Ctrl D keyboard shortcut to duplicate the action. Group and then center align the resulting row to the underlying artboard, creating 5 copies using the same method, which will vertically stack, making sure the outlines overlap. Once you're done, group and then vertically center align them to the underlying artboard, pushing them to the bottom by a distance of 23 pixels, making sure to mask them afterwards using a 602 by 600 pixels rectangle. All you have to do now in order to create a pattern is go to Object, Pattern, 
and hit make which will bring up the pattern options window. Here you'll want to give your design a custom name and then check the size style to art and move tile with art options. Once you're ready, simply hit done and your new pattern should be now available within the swatches panel. To use the pattern, select the newly created swatch and then grab any of the basic shapes and simply click and drag along your artboard. I hope you had fun working on this little project and if you have any questions please post them within the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.